Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you the random fill technique that I use to um, fill in my Ursa Major bears. So I've gone ahead, this is a piece of black pelon, and I've gone ahead and um, used this self adhesive tear away stabilizer that I drew out my. <coughs> My shape and then I printed it on my printer and cut it out colored the background with a colored pencil so if any peeks through the beads it'll blend in and I've gone and done the outline as well as the constellation so I'm gonna be using three beads to fill and I have a little pile here left over from the last bear that I did, but I'm gonna go ahead and make some more. So I am using um, 1102 cut silver lined light sapphire, and I'm going to use a whole string from the Hank. I'm just gonna pull the thread. Usually it pulls, but. I'm going to remove that from the string. And then I'm going to use one string of the 1102 Cuts Trans AB Montana Blue. I love this color, it's so pretty. And then I'm going to use, this is dark blue silver lined, and I'm going to use just probably a half a hank. I mean a half, sorry, half a string, not half a hank. This is, this whole thing is a hank. Maybe just half a string of this. And then to prevent the beads from coming off your hank, I just tie a knot around that last bead so I can hang them back up and it won't come off. So I'm going to be using for my thread um, Nymo size D. And the best tip that I have for threading is to take your beading needle and put it down, squeeze the tip, like so. And you wanna put your needle down onto the thread. Like that. And then I'm going to melt the ends of my string. I don't tie knots. And pinch it, you can hear my kids. <laughs> that way, when I put the backing on the back of the bear when it's complete, the knot will lay flat and you won't be able to feel any bumps. Also, I'm gonna put a pinch of silver beads that I can pick up just randomly to put in as other stars. I'm going to give that a mix. I mean, I'm not going to pick it up randomly, but it's just better to just mix it. You can pick them up randomly, but I'm just going to choose the ones that I'm going for. So this fill, I'm not sure what this fill technique is called. Um, I'm going to call it the random fill technique. I'm going to put on my leather thimble that I use when I bead. I'm going to aim my phone down a little more. Sorry. And let's see. I'm going to start with the foot and come up around. And let's begin. 
again. Put my thread. Okay, so for the random technique, it's just a matter of picking up two beads, one bead. Um, usually I do two beads unless I'm filling a space, and it's just about going in different directions. So let me show you what I mean by that. I picked up two beads. It's hard to see. I can zoom in a little more. So there's two beads on my needle. And there. now with this technique, um, because you're only picking up between two and one bead, you don't have to tack it down in the middle. It will stay pretty snug. Sometimes if a bead's giving you a hard time, you might find the need to tack, but um, I usually don't find the need to have to tap down any beads. So I'm going to pick up two more beads. And then instead of going up this way, I'm just going to go in the opposite direction. Sometimes the bead wants to do that. That. And I might come here, start in the middle. I'm trying to anchor my hand so that it's not going to move. Okay. Pick up two beads. Maybe I'll come up this way. And then there's a small gap right there, which I think I can fit one of my silver-lined blue beads. So it's just about working in little sections, picking up two beads at a time, um, being random about the colors that you pick up. I don't go way too far from the area that I'm working. I just kind of stay in the same area until I've got that little section filled. Now I'm gonna... Now I could put two of the tubular beads here, but it would be going the same direction as this. So I'm going to stick in another one of my silver lined beads. Here. So, and then I'm going to put a short tubular bead going up here. And the thing about not tacking down is that it helps the bead to be a little mobile. So let's say this bead was a little long and I wanted to make sure that it fit here, if this was tacked down, this bead couldn't move. But because it's not tacked down, it can kind of squeeze it, squeeze into the spot. And if it needs a little extra room, it can just push those two beads out of the way. Once you You know, I've just tried it for a couple times, then you start to get into a rhythm and it can go a little faster. Now this one, I'm going to go diagonal, maybe. Let's see. Oh, picked up 
a piece of fuzz. And you just kind of, it's like a puzzle, you just kind of look at your beads, kind of eyeball what you think might fit in that space. Because, you know, the, the beads aren't all exact as far as shape-wise, so they're all a little different. You pick up two beads and come this way. Sometimes your beads don't want to lay flat. Now I think it's time for a silver lined bead. I'm going to be able to fit two beads in that spot, so I'm just going to go one at a time. And maybe another silver line. So it's nice to have along with the tubular beads, it's nice to have a, just a, a round bead or a rondelle that you can go in and just kind of fill in gaps. And also, you know, this style, there will be gaps between the beads, so it's important to color your background. So if anything peeks through, it's really difficult to tell that it's not a bead or to tell that there's a gap. Oh, I picked up three beads by mistake. So I'm gonna just snap that bead. Sacrifice my bead. Sometimes if you get a little too close when you're putting the thread down, it'll have a hard time laying flat. I'm gonna put two beads here. I'm tangled up in the pliers that I used to nip that bead. Let me just get those out of the way. So this can be a little tedious. Now see right here, I have a gap right there. I'm going to, so I'm gonna put in a silver bead and make it just be a random star. There we go. And see, because I don't tack those beads down, um, even though the gap was a little smaller than this bead, when I put it in, the others are able to move out of the way. 
you just don't, you, it's okay to crowd a little bit, but you don't want to crowd too much because you don't want your edging, your lines to um, get out of whack. And that, especially if you're doing um, some of this type of fill up against um, like these uh, rhinestone banding, for instance, if you crowd your work here too much, it could misshape this, push it out of the way. So it's important just to realize that that could happen and kind of go easy, not kind of crowd your beads. You could scoop beads, like, um, just in a pile like that. Just take your needle and run through it and scoop. I mean, that is more random, but... So it's just not going, it's just trying to change up your direction and keep your beads always going vertical, horizontal, diagonal. Sometimes it's about picking up two beads, sometimes it's about picking up one bead. I really love the final complete look of this random fill. It just is so pretty on the eye. small space, so I'm going to use one of my silver lined beads. Use it so far. Hope everybody is well. Finding things to keep yourselves occupied during this social isolation. I've been beating. <laughs> My daughter and I just made um, some caramelized sweet and sour tofu for her one of her health projects and it was so yummy I love tofu I think you have to like tofu it's I mean tofu is one of those things that either you like it or you don't but one of the secrets I found is to buy extra firm tofu and then to drain it or put a weight on it to get out any excess moisture and then coat it with some corn flour and saute it until it's nice and golden before putting on the sauce and it makes it crispy. It was so delicious. I'm still full. I ate so much. 
Okay, I didn't go far enough away. So no matter how much I pull, this is not gonna leave flat. So because I've doubled up my needle and it's not a single needle, I'm just gonna, this is how you have to remove your needle. So if you turn it around, Line your needle up with the hole. You should be able to just poke it out by pulling it. There. And now I just have to go a little ways more away. There we go. I'm going to use a blue silver line right in here to fill in that gap. I don't know if there's any other things that anybody is interested in seeing um, or seeing watching me do. I don't know if anybody's interested in quilling or Kids are outside playing the neighbor kids. My work area is right. It's a window that looks over the street. I absolutely love it. Keep my eye on what's going on. Talk to the kids in the summer when my window's open. <laughs> Here's another spot that I can stick in one of the little blue silver lines. Okay, I see some thread poking up over here. So I'm going to tack this one down. like so far so I'm gonna come up here So I already have, there's a little gap right here, but I already have a blue silver line, so I'm going to look for something in my bead pile that's really, that's a tubular bead, but it's really small. Here we go. I found one. I don't know if you can hear her laugh. 
something. Okay, so I have two going that way. So I'm going to make a couple going this way. small space here so I'm gonna look for a thin here we go silver lined boobie okay and then I don't want to go too far in here which could end up pushing on these without coming back down here to work down here I thought I picked up two beads for that one, but I didn't. It's okay. There's a gap right there. Okay, it's a small. No, oh, I should put my hand down here so it doesn't move. A small tubular bead. We'll come here and put another small tubular bead. So I'm just looking to see if there's any gaps that I can fit a bead in. And I'm going to try to fit a bead here. Let's see if I can find a thin one. And I'm going to try to fit a 
silver bead and this gap. Oh my goodness, my stomach is just making noises. Okay, this is not going the direction that I want it to. There we go. So that's what it's about. And... I guess I can come back and show you what it looks like when it's finished. I guess we can keep going for a little while. Do some like ASMR beating or something. This part right here, I have to be very careful because I don't want to push, end up putting something in there that would push this rhinestone out of the way. So I'm going to look for a very thin silver lined blue bead that I could put there. I think this is thin enough. If not, I'll have to remove it. No, I can already tell. Here we go. Okay, that didn't move. I'm looking for another small tubular bead that could fit in there.
and this thread showing so I'm gonna despite my best efforts to hide it so I'm gonna tack it down and then I'm gonna end this thread because it's getting too short to work with here we go see how the, just tacking it down hit it so to end it I'm going to cut off my thread And also, the reason why I'm using white thread versus um, black thread is because these beads are translucent. So if you use black thread in a translucent bead, it can just darken up the bead, not let the light shine and reflect. Whereas if you're using the white thread, um, it just helps the beads to shine and the light to reflect off the white thread so it looks more um, true to color so let's add some more thread again pinching the thread almost until you can't see the thread. And just putting your needle down on top of it, like so. Doubling it up, and then I'm going to burn the ends. If you do it quick, it doesn't hurt, <laughs> but I, I don't know about for beginners if it would hurt <laughs> or burn. I mean, my hands are so used to hot, hot dishwater, and so the heat really doesn't bother me. And plus, I have a little callus from beating, so. I mean, if, if you don't want to pinch something, you could always, let me show you too what you could do, is you could just put your needle through, and then pull your thread. Let me show you. You could just pull your thread like so until it's about that far away from the pellon, and then you could burn it like this, and then put your lighter down on top of it to flatten it. See? That's an, if you don't want to pinch it and burn yourself. My thread out of the way. My thread always seems to catch everything on my desk. to my daughter.
so I'm gonna look for a thin tubular bead to pop in right here. Like so. So there we go. Okay, so that bead that I just popped in there is too big and it kind of pushed that rhinestone banding out of the way. So I'm just going to try and find something smaller. What is that? The blueberry I sent you. Oh, let me try. Mmm. I'm good. I like the blueberry sorbet. She just gave me a bite of blueberry sorbet. It's really delicious. It's the blueberry acai one. Acai? We need to get stuff to make acai bowls. Mm. The raspberry one's better. It's time to use a silver bead. Just take a moment every now and then just to take a look at your work, see if there's any spaces that need to be filled. so quiet. I usually don't bead in this amount of quiet. <laughs> I usually listen to something, whether it's a book on audiobook or podcast or NPR or music. I can hear my wall clock ticking. Well, there we go. This video is about 45 minutes now, so 
I think I'm gonna end it here and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when this part's complete. Okay, so I'm almost finished. Just have a little bit left on his paw or her paw or its paw and then I will be com completed, complete, <laughs> finished. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I can't talk when I'm be beating. And I'm gonna fit one more little gap there it's done I'm just gonna look closely at my beads see if there's anything that needs to be tacked down Right here, I can see some thread, so I'm gonna tack that bead down. Okay, I made a knot. Okay, this doesn't want to cooperate <laughs> with me. It wants to tangle into a knot. Okay, so... Let's take it out. made a knot at the very tip of it. So I have to cut it and pull it out. It's okay, let's try again. I'm gonna use a different needle rather than try to get the knot out of that. Let's see if I can thread both. go. Okay, let's try that again. Now it doesn't want to go through. <laughs> oh goodness, there we go. There. And I don't see any gaps anywhere. It's a piece of fuzz that I need to get tweezers to pull that piece of fuzz out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the second one. I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to back it. Um, if you want to see how I'm going to back these earrings, it's in a, I have another my other posts that I did um, a couple days ago, the flower earrings. I'm going to do this one the same way. I'm going to put some um, craft paper, acid-free craft paper, then I'm going to put um, a layer of buckskin, and then I'm going to edge. And my bears are going to be edged in turquoise. So that's it. It's a finished product. Thank you.